Hey, what's up guys? It's Masley here, back doing another Kane's Wrath video. And today we got Phoenix playing as the Green Zocom versus Dean Dunn, who I have pronounced wrong in the last time I'd done a video featuring him. So apologies there. We also have a few observers. Dizzy's actually been getting pretty good lately. I'll be keeping an eye on him. And Phoenix, obviously, I know him pretty well. we done a Skype uh, dual cast. Um, I think it was last video, unless I decide to upload one before that. But it went pretty well. Uh, your feedback was uh, quite positive. Well, mainly positive. So uh, hopefully he will, will be willing, willing to do another one with me in the future. Uh, this game will be of a similar, similar length as the one that we did cast, which was bloody long, if I do say so myself. So we got... Phoenix down here playing as the Zocom, Procom, Brocom, Zocom, whatever. <laughs> There's so many names that people like to call it these days. Uh, against Steel Talons, which is also a pretty shitty faction. <laughs> it is, without a doubt, the worst faction in the game. Zocom, it's close, but. I'd say that Steel Talons is worse, mainly because they lack the base defenses, the advanced base defenses. And uh, Sonic Weaponry is very important, against, especially against Skrin. They have pretty much no chance against Skrin because uh, no, obviously no EMP grenades to counter Hexal Aiming. And uh, no Sonic Emitters, so they're pretty vulnerable to Mechapedes, as Mechapedes are the only unit that really... A GDI is really the only faction that can counter Mechapedes efficiently because of their sonic emitters do crazy splash damage against them. So we've got Steel Talons up here. It's just going to be a standard eco match. It seems like both players uh, got a spike. Phoenix able to grab the left hand spike while Dean Dunn getting the right hand spike here. Both sides have managed to get a scout into the base. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. We have Dean Dunn who got a scout into Phoenix's base, but it doesn't seem like Phoenix got into Dean Dunn's base. I wonder if he has vision. He does not have vision. He doesn't know that what's going on there. I mean, Dean Dunn could be rushing him at the moment. Could be going for like two ref airfield. But against the, the, the Zocom rocket harvesters, uh, it could be a problem. As those rocket harvesters have anti-air capabilities. But Phoenix is going to be expanding here. I'm just going to refer to him as Phoenix because really that's the name he's been using for the last six or so months. <laughs> he used to be known as Steve Nash. But now he is known as Phoenix. And Dean Dunn expanding. Both sides have about identical timings for their expansion. Nothing crazy happening just yet. Uh, Why is he transferring his fifth harvester to that field there? I mean, ideally you'd want to have your fifth harvester on this field first. So you can get a good ratio. And obviously your refineries have uh, closer to dock as you can see if he's not going to fix that harvester there it's going to make its way towards this refinery and that rifleman squad in the harvester able to pick off some scouts there so making full use of the heavy harvesters empty garrison slot very nice to see indeed this pit will take out these this foxhole here obviously if you want to do something sneaky like uh, airfield orca then you want to take care of these foxholes first Preferably 30 seconds to a minute before you go for your tech. Just so you can conceal it as best as possible. If we go to Dean Dunn's view, uh, I doubt he can see that operation center. No, he cannot see the operation center. He, he doesn't know about the airfield here. So he probably assumes that Phoenix is going for another refinery. But since he is Zocom, I'd imagine he'd be going for the ceramic armor first. So not going for the Zocom Orcas. Instead, going to go for the Hammerheads, which is probably the more wiser choice. As the Hammerheads are way more versatile, in my opinion. They can at least counter pit bulls and anti-air units. <laughs> Orcas, on the other hand, they have a terrible time in dealing with anything that moves. Because obviously their sonic grenades need to be focus fired in order to hit. It seems like there's a lot of micro, but there's not much reward in the Zocom Orca. That's, that's the problem which I have with the Zocom Orca. Whereas the, the GDI Orca does a huge amount of damage and doesn't really need that much micro whatsoever. But here we go. We got Pibbles from Steve Nash Phoenix. 
going to retreat though, seeing those rocket squads. He may be able to find a gap in the defenses there, but no, not quite. Uh, Phoenix going to get a harvester destroyed there. So Dean Dunn massing many, many pipples. He's going to see the ceramic armor on the airfield. And he may lose another harvester. Phoenix going to lose two harvesters. Oh, that's got to hurt for Phoenix. He may have lost the game if he lost another harvester there. But uh, making it out alive with one pitbull. A great sum of damage done by Dean Dunn. And Dean Dunn, he's got a good eco. Floating some money. Uh, what should he do right now? He should go for a tech. He should go for firehawks. And he should go for a reclamator hub. Place the Reclamator Hub here and train a Marv so it can harvest his opponent's Tiberium field, thus denying him the Tiberium there in the late game. And obviously the Marv will uh, clean up this Tiberium field and pay for itself because, oh, let's face it, there's a lot of tip there. And the Marv can be used to deny your opponent's expansion here. Really, that's the only thing I see. I see Dean Dunn doing, and, but instead he's going to be unpacking his, his MCB, going for Firehawks. Uh, I'd imagine he'd be, be floating a lot of money at the moment. He's got eight grand, so I'd sink that money into a Marv if I was him. But it doesn't matter. He's got Pipples here. Is he going for Mortars? He's going for something. It's training too slowly to be a Mortar, so it's probably going to be Railguns. So going for Railguns, the Shadow I will get destroyed. There is no tech units of any kind for Phoenix, although he does have his tech lab up and operational. The Mortar will definitely come in handy here because he can take out this tech lab if he had the Mortar upgrade, but instead he's going to go for the Pipples. The Pipples, Steve Nash may be able to defend off against these Pipples. The Harvesters obviously are going to join the fight and defend off against these Pipples. Not going to even claim a single Firehawk, especially as the Ceramic Armor gives them so much additional health. And... Uh, not sure why he's bombing the ground there. Perhaps that's a bit of a misclick. And Phoenix, he'll be going on a counter-attack right now. I'm not sure if it was a wise idea of Dean Dunn to suicide all those units for nothing. But Phoenix will establish a base here. He could go for this spike. Uh, likewise for Dean Dunn. He's going to go for that spike now immediately. And if Phoenix is paying attention, I mean, he could go for that Tiberium spike. But his engineer is doing nothing. He's just sitting there idle. Instead, Phoenix finds it more appropriate to scout the base and see what's up. He'll see the, the Firehawks, obviously, in GDI mirrors. It, it, it's going to come down to air superiority. Who has control of the air? And that player usually does uh, pull the strings of the entire match. Because the air, obviously, can be anywhere you want it to be. And, uh, yeah, the Pipples here are belonging to Phoenix, so... He doesn't have to worry about his own units. These seem to be the Firehawks of Dean Dunn. Are they on anti-aircraft loader at the moment? They are indeed. He could go for the uh, Strato, not the Strato fighter, the hard points upgrade. That would make those uh, Firehawks much more efficient against the Orcas, not Orcas, the Firehawks, because these Firehawks absorb more than four missiles. So those hard points may be necessary if Dean Dunn decides to take control of the skies. But we have so many Railgun Titans now out on the field for for Dean Dunn. And Dean Dunn's going to take out all these all these units here. These light units have absolutely no chance whatsoever against these Titans. And even the infantry are going to have a hard time against so many Titans here. We have two, we have one Sonic Emitter and one Shatterer. But both will get dispatched pretty quickly. And no adaptive armor. That could come in useful here. Because he could use that in conjunction with the Railgun Accelerator. And uh, the Railgun Accelerator does a, increase the rate of fire. But the Adaptive Armor compensates for the, the health that they lose during the duration of that upgrade. While it's in use. But the MCV is under extreme threat here. There is nothing that Phoenix can do against so many Titans. He's put a fence on it. Sonic Emitter goes down. But Dindon has to focus down that Sonic Emitter. He's doing that right now. Dean Dunn has got so many harvesters here. Phoenix, he could go for... He's got ceramic firehawks, but if Dean Dunn fences this refinery, it's going to take more than one bombing run to take out the refinery there. And the Marv is out on the field for Phoenix. So his safe, his base is safe and sound, luckily. I mean, if that MCV went down, I, I'd imagine that Phoenix would be considerably uh, behind. He is considerably behind at the moment still. 
Uh, I'd definitely put a fence on this refinery here because if Phoenix is able to destroy that refinery, then Dean Dunn may struggle to place another one down. Of course, his uh, other two Tiberium fields have been exhausted. I'm not regrowing any of those Tiberium fields. And a harvester, a stray harvester, getting picked off there. So unfortunately for Phoenix, uh, losing a harvester, although they, both sides probably have a surplus amount of harvesters. Uh, not so much for Phoenix. I mean, he's only got four harvesters. Uh, ideally, you'd want more than that. Probably five or six harvesters at this stage of the game is ideal. But uh, getting a few shots off on those... On those firehawks, but those firehawks just do not give a damn, do they? <laughs> They've got so much health. And oh no, 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 no! Oh my, wow! <laughs> Perfect timing there by Dean Dunn, focusing, uh, getting the airfield before the, the firehawks were as as the firehawks firehawks were landing. Incredibly great timing there by Dean Dunn, and I imagine that one of those firehawks has been promoted. I'd be a bit concerned if they were not. Bit of an experience bug, if so. And no, surprisingly. None of those Firehawks pr got promoted there. Have to alert CGF. And tell him what's up with that. We've got four Behemoths now. It seems like they got the Kane Edition skins, as you can see. They appear to be a bit metallic. And uh, not like the vanilla Behemoth. But the skin does not change the combat effectiveness of the units. <laughs> Obviously some newbies think so. They think that you're hacking because you've got different skins on your units, which makes no sense whatsoever. But there you go. And these behemoths are not garrisoned of any anti-infantry. So, I mean, Phoenix can go for infantry. He doesn't have composite armor or the uh, Zocom equivalent, which is the Tiberian field suits. Unfortunately for him, these behemoths could definitely use a uh, rifleman squad inside of them to grant some anti-infantry bonus. They also get a range buff inside of these uh, behemoths. But uh, Phoenix using the force move on his rifleman squad, as you can see, because they did not get suppressed by those behemoths there. And where are the firehawks? Was he... Did he have all his firehawks still remaining? Okay, he's still got four firehawks. Phoenix is in a lot of trouble here. But uh, these juggernauts are stranded out in the field. They're unsupported. What is Dean Dunn going to do with them? He's just going to lose them here. He's using the... Sh Did I just hear Shockwave? What? <laughs> oh yeah, he used it. The Marv has made his way into Dean Dunn's base. Blimey. <laughs> this is a interesting game. And there's no EMP except the Shockwave, which he just used. This Marv tank will get destroyed there. The Marv is on in the base. Two Marv tanks are coming towards this Marv. The Marv may get destroyed here. The, it does go to veteran, so it did cause the damage. The behemoths did get destroyed there, but just imagine if, I mean, if Dean Dunn had put rifleman squads inside those behemoths, he would have been able to take care of those infantry. With ease, in fact. So those uh, Steel Talon garrison, uh, garrisons inside their units can uh, be quite useful in many situations. The Marv now is out on the field for Dean Dunn, but uh, this Marv is going to be destroyed, especially as it's revealing its rear armor but it has done the damage and getting a fair chunk of damage on Dean Dunn's Marv there which is very nice indeed getting more refineries but uh, Phoenix has fenced this one here so obviously it'll take uh, more bombs to destroy that refinery uh, Dean Dunn does get access to hard points so he could go for those hard points it would make dropping these these uh, refineries much easier and you could go for the power plants I mean once you've researched the, sh the hard point upgrade you could destroy these power plants in, with one firehawk so you can go around the whole base and destroy the entire power grid but uh, I'm not sure if Dean Dunn's aware of these infantry forces here uh, he probably is not and I'm afraid if Dean Dunn cannot end the game he's gonna be faced in an awkward situation because he hits out of Tiberium now and still going for Mammoth Tanks, despite scouting the infantry in the bottom, going for the Mammoth Tanks, I mean, he's got the Railgun upgrade, but uh, I'm afraid losing all of those behemoths there was a huge blow for Dean Dunn, not supporting his units there, which was bad. Actually, Phoenix was able to reclaim two behemoths. He's probably going to put Rocket Squads inside those behemoths. He could even put the Heroic Rifleman Squad inside the behemoth, then it would be impossible to to take care of those behemoths with just uh, infantry alone. Oh no, this Marv's going to take a lot of damage, especially from these behemoths here. 
And Phoenix is getting a good surround on this map, trying to get to the rear and side armor. And what is happening up here? We got hammerheads for Phoenix. He's gonna get these power plants. And yes, getting both the power plants there. And could this be the end for Dean Dunn? I do think so. I mean, the hammerheads are coming into the base. Go for the power plants first. Just to prevent these AA batteries from coming up. There is nothing on the field for for Phoenix to defend off against these hammerheads. Uh, not Phoenix, for Dean Dunn, sorry. And Phoenix, he does have his MCV. He's expanded right now. He's in no shortage of Tiberium. And I'm afraid that... Uh, what can he do against so many hammerheads? I mean, Phoenix, he's able to mass up so many hammerheads here that it's going to be impossible for Dean Dunn to counter with just unupgraded anti-aircraft batteries. These power plants are in a vulnerable position. He does not have any more build. He's got an Ereclimate hub. That's all he has remaining. And this Mav tank will get destroyed here. I do not see Dean Dunn making a comeback out of this situation, I'm afraid. And Phoenix, all he has to do now is go for the Reclamator Hub and he would be out of this, and uh, Dean Dunn will be out of this game here. He needs to micro his units. He's just going to get that power plant there. Another Mav tank comes out, which isn't the ideal unit you want to see. And he sails off his last production building. Surely. Okay, right. I mean, I guess it's understandable. It's, it's GG right here. There's no way that the Dean Dunn can make a comeback. So that was a pretty good game. Uh, indeed. Where are the hammerheads? Hammerheads are around there somewhere. But these rocket squads will get dispatched pretty quickly by these uh, rifleman squads. Just a few rocket squads remaining. That one is heroic. And I and imagine that Dean Dunn will be selling the remaining two structures of his unless he has any engineer sneaking around the edge of the map looking to capture the MCV of his opponent so he can make a, a very unlikely comeback. But, uh, I mean, we're just going to have to wait and see what's going to happen now. Phoenix coming out with a very nice victory indeed. Dean Dunn going down in that game. Uh, interestingly enough there, because the game was 1.75 megabytes in length, and I was expecting it to be around 45 minutes, but being 16 minutes, probably because there were so many observers and the game was counting the, the clicks of the observers as they were observing. Uh, so yeah, uh, Dean Dunn going down in that game, making a, a few decisions, uh, wrong decisions in that game, pretty profound bad decisions actually by Dean Dunn. Not supporting those behemoths there uh, was a terrible move of his, and uh, I, I reckon that was the turning point of that game. Phoenix coming through with a nice victory and being behind throughout the most part of the game, especially after losing two harvesters in the early stages. So yeah, that was a pretty good game. And if we go through the stats really quickly, we can see that the kill to death ratio for Phoenix is 1.08 and 0.88 for Dean Dunn. But favorite unit for Phoenix is the Missile Squad, while the favorite unit for Dean Dunn is the Rifleman Squad. And really towards the end, uh, Dean Dunn had a considerable amount more of Tiberium compared to Phoenix. So yeah, if you thought this video was remotely entertaining, then don't forget to like it, and uh, I'll see you guys later.